Hi, welcome you all to the Crypto Singh Show and my name is Gunpreet Singh and today we have a very exciting show today and today it's not about the Bitcoin pricing, the NFT is going down, the NFT is going up, Metaverse. It's actually quite interesting what it is today. Well, today's show is all about India. Well, absolutely, you heard it right, India and how India will see digitalization. Now, even if you're not in crypto or if you're in crypto, this show is for you because this is an entire data of what India is going to go, uh, how India is going to go ahead and uh, would we as Indians accept digitalization or do we still think that the, there's a huge population in India that still does not use digital platforms and crypto and all these things are something that might just never come into India or never be a part of India. Well, you might have so many questions on India and where exactly are we heading to? But before that, we really need to understand how we work as Indians. I mean, how India is working in terms of digit digitalization, because everything we talk today is about digital platforms. And so is crypto and so is everything. So how, I mean, have we penetrated to the deep roots in India where the major of the population uses crypto or digital platforms or we are still lagging behind between uh, behind all the other countries and where do we stand a chance in between us fed governments and all these things happening where does india stand a chance and is india moving ahead or is india moving backwards well everything in this show tune in to this show till the end and before we get into all our charts data everything and i give you a presentation on why I am bullish on India in crypto. Well, you heard it, right? And I am extremely bullish. Why it, I'm bullish is something that I'm going to give you a presentation before that. Please do like, share and subscribe. <clears throat> so let me pull on the presentation about the... Now, this is all about India. And this is about India as a country now before we start this let me tell you let's get into the digitalization now in terms of digitalization is something that we need to understand you know where india is coming from and where it would move ahead and how accepting it would be for the indians to accept all these digital platforms now in now india enters 2022 with largely rapid growing economy which we all know is where have one of the most probably the best growing economies and according to the Indian government, we would grow by 9.2% to reach $3.1 trillion this year. Now, according to IMF, which is slightly more conservative, they are saying we will grow by 8.5%. Now, <clears throat> we will be the fastest growing economy in 2022. Beating China's growth estimated at 5.6%, which I think China is going to get into recession. And I think this might just decrease as well. So I think India has got a fair chance to really take over this economy as of now. But nothing happens in a day or two. It's going to be a few years from now. And exactly what they have been saying that within a decade, about 10 years, you see, we will India will overtake Japan to become the second largest economy in Asia Pacific. Now, this is huge. This is not small. So India's normal nominal GDP measured in US terms is forecasted to rise from 2.7 trillion to 8.4 trillion by 2030, which means we are going to grow four times. Well, <clears throat> what this has to do with crypto and all well we are going to come to it this is an entire presentation about how india is moving ahead and with the digital platforms as well now this means that where the you know we will overtake japan to become the second largest economy in asia pacific and germany and the uk to rank third in the world so I mean, we're right now in the pace and I, I won't say we're in the pace. We're actually faster than a lot of these economies where recession would set in. This is probably the best time that India would actually go ahead. And I personally feel that India will get into it. Now, based on the economic growth, it's not sufficient to present a you know thesis on crypto in India. But according to the World Bank, 
India's population is 1.35 billion and is growing on an average of 1% year by year on year, making it world's largest democracy by population. Well, <clears throat> India has 1.18 billion mobile connections, 700 million internet users and 600 million smartphones. 80% of the Indians over 15 years old have a bank account. Now, this is again big. Now, so we have 80% of the Indians who have the bank account. We are 1.18 billion mobile connections. So we're already digital. Now, <clears throat> the, the age in India in 2020 was 28.4 years with China 38.4 years and US 38.3 years, according to the UN figures. But saying that this definitely means that this is young India. Now we have all the youngsters coming up and we have an age factor on the side of India, which will again help the economy to grow. Now saying that, you know, we've set up APIs and digital public goods to aim, unlock the economic uh, primitives of the identity data payment of population scale so all of these things you know have come into play now what actually majorly came into play was Aadhaar card now as we all know whoever has been in India Aadhaar is like the national security number in US India gave these Aadhaar cards which was a 12, 12 digit number which in relation you know everything today is now related to your Aadhaar card so which has never actually happened before now it had you know so the primary aim was 90 to cover the of course to cover the entire india so you know it, it is so <clears throat> is a unique 12 digit number given to every citizen using biometric inputs and is primary identifier that can be rolled out several government welfare schemes and programs so 1.2 billion people almost 90 percent of the indian population signed up for the digital id in less than 10 years so less than 10 years i would rather not even think that this is 10 years i mean uh you know 90 percent of india has become digital so and by Aadhaar, it does not mean digital but in a way it does mean digital because Aadhaar links to your bank account to your mobile phones to everything now <clears throat> india started with this thing which is known as the upi now, where we are coming from is the economic growth first. Then we came how India is getting into digital platform. Now, where we are going is the UPI, which is, you know, the unified payment interface, which I'm sure everyone would have heard. And it's probably one of the best um, ways of transacting money, which I don't think is present in any other any other country in the world and India has really done this well. So we are in going towards, uh, you know, digital India in a way far in a, in a much faster pace than any other country, actually. Now, <clears throat> getting on to a bit of theory and, uh, you know, definition, UPI is a new layer to India's retail payment system that provides new real-time fund transfer to bank customers now now you know the time is eventually within few seconds you have money in your account and it's probably something that everyone has been using it and it's one of the fastest ways to transfer money which everyone is understanding and now they all know that this is probably the easiest way to do it as well now UPN, UPI is the dominant payment mechanism in India with 4.6 billion transactions worth rupees 8.26 lakh crores which is 101 billion us dollars taking place in 2021 december we are in 2022 almost a year after that this numbers would have increased a lot <coughs> a third paperless layer of stack allows for dig for digitalization of official documents information reducing the paper-based bureaucracy and increasing efficiency and integrity now i've already explained you this what this means that you know it's faster there are no papers involved you don't need to sign any papers all you need to do is scan pay and just move ahead just like crypto right isn't it so 
well i'll be coming to crypto but this is a presentation that will go on for uh, you know i'll explain you how this would relate eventually this crypto will become a part of india but before that let's get on to the presentation now you know so basically india is trying to build up a digital economy which i think our prime minister has been saying since a long long time and this has actually happened more uh, towards when the you know the um, one set of government has actually come into power and it is then that this digitalization has actually been increasing a lot so in 2020 india's national stock exchange nse surpassed us america's cme group inclusive to become world's largest derivatives boast by volume of contracts traded now volume on the indian exchanges grew on the indian exchange grew 58% to approximately 6 billion derivative contracts in 2019 now we're talking about 2022 here now so try and understand how we are increasing and how this is increasing now india's nse has the largest number of derivatives contracts traded so india is excelling in multiple strategic areas and there are many reasons to be bullish on india's future In this report, we will outline why these and other factors combine to create an environment that we believe makes India one of the most important crypto markets in the world. So, <coughs> now digital India, a foundation of Web three. Well, uh, mature, uh, you know, digital infrastructure. and uh, infrastructure creates opportunity for digital products conveniences everything related to it i'm sure we all know about this till now i mean uh, internet broadband mobile connections data centers enterprises cloud services software everything apis and integrations we will first focus on the internet and mobile penetration now this is extremely important because the internet and mobile penetration is what you require for crypto actually and <clears throat> is internet and mobile only being used for gaming or other purposes today well we'll check for what purposes are we using it so we will examine the digital infrastructure and piping namely apis and integration via the indian stack that links indian digital economy and makes india a uniquely prime location for web3 innovation well <clears throat> lastly we do touch on india's upcoming cbdc the digital rupee now web3 is something that uh, let me explain you somewhere just a small kind of a definition of what web3 is web3 really gives you a kind of an identity now it gives you a unique identity now let's say we've been you've been watching uh, videos on your phone you've been playing games but it's everything has been centralized right so whenever we we watch these videos and there are ads cookies they come up and they follow us so in a way we are giving out our location our preferences to other people who are probably three four players in the industry who are centralized and these companies know what you are doing web3 becomes decentralized you'll have your unique code exactly like an nft where it can't be duplicated and you know there's a transaction that is recorded on the blockchain and it's completely like a unique identity that is given to you <clears throat> so web3 is in a way where your identity you know your identity your privacy everything comes into play and it becomes more decentralized so now what is now getting on to uh india again now internet <clears throat> covid 19 lockdowns and a push for the rural internet development led to increased growth in internet penetration in recent years with india catching up to oecd average according to the data of the world bank in 2021 the percentage of the indians using the internet reached 60% for the first time and is likely to continue rising which we all know right <clears throat> now this is a graph where you can see the internet penetration skyrocketing now percentage of the indian population using the internet doubled in 2019 reaching 61% in 2021 now building a reliable foundation of a nation's digital revolution has many positives and secondaries 
and se uh, secondary and, and tertiary effects. Robust and reliable digital infrastructure precede exponential increase in startup creation, software production, open entrepreneurship programs, and sophisticated fintech platforms. Now, this means that we are open to a lot of companies coming in into digital, into technology, and uh, trying to fill this gap up, or I won't say gap, trying to take this opportunity ahead where they know that the Indians are getting digital, and uh, this is the time for the tech companies to get into India and become digital and get this, uh, you know, probably be the first mover's advantage or even you know and uh, and take as much work as you can from the you know the indian consumers who've been using digital platforms now this is the funding and the deal count now if you actually see this is the funding amount in billions and this is the kind of funding we've had in 2019 2021 and let's look at q321 it's skyrocketed I mean, coming in two years where we had 2.6, we have 10.9 and the deal count from 219 to 347. This is just unbelievable what's happening. We are growing five times in terms of, you know, tech, in terms of funding. We are, India is growing to probably the fastest pace it can. Now, mobile again i said internet and mobiles are the most is something that we need to understand before we get onto a crypto now india has the second highest number of smartphone users globally with substantial room for deeper smartphone phone penetration throughout the country india's projected to reach 820 million smartphone users by 2022 and as forecast and report by kpmg an indian cellular and electronic association in 2021 india domestic sales crossed 33 million 82 percent increase in two years well you could say this is an effect of post covid and internet but whatever it is it's changed india's you know, we have another 300 to 400 mobile users as expected in coming decade. The launch of Reliance Geo in 2006 caused a ripple effect in the telecom industry and facilitated the recent growth of the mobile phone market in India. Geo priced data at a substantial discount to market at the time, which greatly accelerated the data consumption in India. So. So Reliance came in with Geo and Geo came in with the price point of view so that it could cater to the 80% of the Indians and which successfully it did and they know the price point in India and they are well aware and they are probably the best players out there in India and they know exactly how the Indian companies or the Indian consumers work and uh, you know in 2006 to now I think Reliance has changed the structure of the internet. Now claiming a world record of 16 million subscribers in its first month, 16 million subscribers in September 2016 and by promising a year of free high speed internet. So they didn't even have a price point, they had free internet. Now, but they knew how to get the, the Indian consumers and they know how to get this market. So all the competitors were forced to slash their rates and uh, the demand for internet was increasing and uh, as you can see for the high speed internet so it increased by 4x i mean the their consumer base was increasing by 4x so this is what has been happening saying that let us look into the you know the countries that are using smartphones india is just second uh behind uh china and uh, then we have you know us and all these countries but india is way ahead of its um you know india is, is into the race races of probably getting the maximum internet subscribers very soon as a result india data consumption grew from 400 mb per month per user on an average to 11 gb per 
after that. It's unbelievable. We had 400 MB per month and now we have 11 GB. The global average price per 1 GB data is $5 in India and <clears throat> is global average is five dollars in the world and in india one gb cost us 0 0.09 dollars so just imagine where we have in the world one gb data costing us five dollar and nine cents well all india needs is nine cents india does not need five dollars so just try and understand the kind of price point that India is working on and I don't think that anyone in the world will be able to achieve these kind of price point that India can. And this is a graph showing how we have increased in numbers, the geo subscribers have increased in numbers and this is tremendously uh, growing. Now, the spread of smartphones and cheap data plans offers a golden opportunities for the companies to tap into a huge pool of users who are only beginning to enter the digital economy. Now, Netflix, we all have heard this. We all know what Netflix is. Netflix <coughs> took advantage of this unique market environment to offer a mobile only plan for the Indians. The first such offer in the company's history. Native India crypto company was slowly moving towards crypto now. Native India crypto companies have also taken the advantage of this opportunity, CoinSwitch. It basically made a mobile trading kind of a platform platform, and uh, because it's, it's just easier when people have mobile and they can probably communicate or transact from their phones. <clears throat> and as Web3 become, becomes increasingly mainstream, we will see more and more apps building. First, UI UX designed to cater to huge market of smartphones, casual gamers, mobile banking customers. India will play, uh, be a you know, will be a key region for the development and user growth for consumer app in future. So again, India's future looks extremely bright, and the cost of mobile internet around the world, Switzerland being the highest, then South Korea, US, Canada, China. Well. <clears throat> cost of mobile internet around the world well we do compare a lot of stuff to china isn't it and uh and india completely and everyone says make in china china is way cheaper well let me tell you something here china's average cost of mobile internet is 9.89 dollars and india is 0 0.26 well i mean we only have russia near to us but that's only around four times more than us. That's it. So, so I think we're way ahead than all of these countries and India is leading their way into this. Now, APIs and organizations developing digital platforms benefit from a comprehensive, well-supported tech stack for India's governments, corporations, startups, and independent developers, a noble star shared tech stack india stack was developed to handle the unprecedented challenges on of onboarding more than billion citizens in a single generation to the digital age so we are already digital now <clears throat> now what does Aadhaar do well we all know right and i told you it's like a unique identification authority so uh, of india you know so you can link it to your phones, your bank accounts, your everything that you do, Aadhaar can be linked to it. So Aadhaar is basically something that links everything. Now, we have discussed this, but again, Unified Payment Interface is a system that aggregate multiple bank accounts into a single mobile app, allowing users to access to several banking and payment features under one hood. This is where India wins it all. And as it did in many countries, COVID-19 forced a lot of Indian consumers online and accelerated the use of non-cash payment. During this, this period, UPI payments overtook all other to become dominant payment mechanism in India, reaching 73 lakh crore, 9.9 .9 billion in US dollar to in 2021. Now, this is a chart where it shows the UPI payment under UPI and no, otherwise the normal payment in the blue. Now, if we see in 2016-17, we were literally zero in that. 
and there was nothing happening around that 2017 made it started to take off and have a look at it in 2019 2020 and 21 we have it has massively increased this is the volume of upi and this is the power of digital digitalization and this is the power of indian spending cashless money which we all talk can you know can never be replaced but let me tell you india is replacing the cash economy into a digital economy now upi <clears throat> is a revolution i've been talking i have been saying that again and again into online payments mobile banking in the indian market so you know the good part is that digital platforms in india is it can serve to probably any class middle lower upper higher anyone so and it's been penetrating in probably everywhere in all the markets in india and uh, our retail is completely is uh, hugely now relied on the upi payments now getting to crypto how does this mean and what does this mean for crypto now exactly what this means for crypto as i told you what web3 is like your unique identity right now aadhaar is like let's say aadhaar in terms of crypto related would be like you have a wallet in crypto your private keys and uh, you know and it can probably now something like unstoppable domains these are the domain names which you don't even need to like if you don't want to be uh so i'll explain i've already explained that in one of my videos what domains are but just to give you a brief summary or you know definition all these domain names are again a single identity kind of a name that you will get and which can be used in future for crypto transactions and they don't need to be on your you know those big wallet addresses that we give out and we might give out the wrong address we would have these domain where we will be given our you know we could buy in into any name say google.etf google.nft google.eth or whatever is available so you can buy that you can keep that and in that you can have a transaction you can have the websites you can have all the utilities on it you can have gaming there's a lot that you can actually do with the domain names also so it's something that i would highly recommend to buy because there was a dot com era where everyone bought that and then later on sold it for a you know a heavier price and same with these domain names so these are like the domain would be your digital identity now KYC, we have Coinbase or you know uh, Coin DCX, all of these doing so your digital identity. Now UPI payments can be USDC, which are stable coins, <coughs> or BUSD or whatever. All these stable coins, or even Solana, Avalanche, Near, all of these guys, or of course Bitcoin and Ethereum. But I don't think anyone wants to part ways with Bitcoin and Ethereum. So if you have it in your in your wallet, don't sell it or don't send it. Well, I'm just joking, but it's your wish what you can do with it. But I don't think a lot of people would be in love to send their uh, Bitcoin and uh, part ways with that. That is emotionally. So then something like uh D digi locker in india we all know what digi locker is so we have decentralized storage like ipfs cr filecoin all of these things and e-sign we have e-signatures so crypto <coughs> crypto has private keys which are your e-signatures and uh, that cannot be given out so you don't need to sign everything now you have digital private keys which is with you now if you sign a paper and give it to someone it's exactly you are going to lose that thing up anyone can do anything with that exactly like your private keys so this is there then you have credit system which is which is going to be the the defi is going to be one of the biggest uh i could say the backbone of the crypto industry now decentralized finance is going to be as big as any other banking sector so you have credit system you have you know like OCN, which is the credit system, but uh, to put it all together, I would say that you know the decentralized finance would be one of the biggest. Uh, it would be more like a banking sector. So for banking, we have decentralized finance in crypto. So crypto is an entire world on its own. What India is trying to achieve, crypto has already achieved that with people all around the world.
So try and understand India is doing that digitalization in India. Now crypto has achieved that with everyone around the world. So whatever you are seeing is something that crypto already does. And crypto has a use case for all of these things. It's not just about Bitcoin. It's not just about Ethereum. It's not just about Solana. It's not just about ADA, Chainlink, all of these cryptos and earning money and trading and getting out of it. It's also about the technology behind it, the Web3 behind it, all of these things. So for data, you have, you know, uh, use zero knowledge or says protocol. All of these things are there. Whether now going ahead, whether crypto oh, before we go ahead, please do like, share and subscribe whether crypto is integrated in future or not. Well, this is a question that a lot of people would ask, but I think we are already on track for that and we are building Web3 protocols and I think India is already building all these things. So mobile penetration has laid a solid foundation and the internet of course first the internet and then the mobiles and now it's it's really laid the foundation for the india to be digital now and we are moving towards digitalization <clears throat> now according to the recent estimates from chain analysis india has the second highest rate of crypto adoption in the world based on sizable transaction volume on p2p platform so first country being Vietnam and then it is India, then Pakistan, Ukraine, Kenya, Nigeria, all of these countries, you can see that. So this is what the, you know, the chain analysis is telling us. So India is actually the second highest uh, crypto adopting country in the world, which might come as a surprise to a lot of you people, but it is what it is. Now, more than 15 million retail crypto investors are Indians. Wow. Isn't that something that we really, uh, you know, surprised about more than 15 million crypto, uh, retail investors are Indians coin switch data suggests that as of 21 August, the average age of the Indian crypto investor is 24. In addition, for more than 65% of the users, crypto was the first asset class that they invested in besides having a traditional bank FT, which is fixed deposit, account registration, uh, registr re registrations from users in tier two to tier three have boosted several centralized uh, exchanges or CEX companies to over 2000% in user growth. Indian Web3 participation is still only about 7.5% of the population. However, mainstream catalysts such as NFT gaming and favorable regulations are all promising signals of the India's growth into Web3 mind share. <clears throat> India is moving closer and closer to regulation. And uh, well, uh, you know, if they legalize crypto, well, I'll, let me talk about this later. So, so, uh, so there are many uh, opportunities for domestically uh, domiciled and regulated institutions like brokerage, like Zeroda, like prof provide professional services on large scale throughout the Indian markets, which would be a major boon to the crypto adoption in the country and globally. Now, the Indian regulation. Now, let me put it in a way that what I mean by uh, in regulation and uh, legalizing it. Now, now, see, it is already legit that you can actually deal in crypto. But saying that Indians have already accepted crypto. You know, who needs to accept crypto is the government. So try and understand here. Indians have already accepted 60, as we saw, 65 uh, 15 million retail crypto investors are Indians. Understand the amount of the investment that the Indians have already done. So, so I think the government once accepts, it would be something that the Indians have already accepted. It. It's about the government. It's not about India. India is already into crypto. If you would think that we are far behind, I don't think I've shown you all the data and the analysis that India is going too far ahead. Now, some of these Bollywood 
stars i'm sure you must have heard about these nft collections that these guys have been doing or been into it we have amitabh bachchan who auctioned first in november 2021 salman khan partnership with nft you know bolly coin in october <coughs> so we have all these guys now several actors and bollywood mu musicians have signed up for nft marketplaces now wazirx rolled out its nft platform in 2021 15 with 15 creators from 15,000 application it received. So far, they have around 1,000 artists, 400 collectors, a wait list of 20,000 artists. Wazirx na native NFT platform has recorded over $400,000 worth of sales between July and October 2021, which projected seven figure 2021 revenues. <coughs> it is massive what is happening around the world. I mean, if you're in India and if you don't know about this and if you're still thinking what crypto is really, I don't think there's any more data I can show you. Everyone talks, but we're talking on data here. I'm not even making something up and showing you this is all the data that has been there. Now in sports, we have ICC to create digital collectibles using NFTs for cricket via fan craze. Try and understand, you know, India is, has uh, probably, you know, one common religion that India has is cricket. And it's not a sport here. It's a common religion which unites the entire India. And we know how these things really work. And if we have something coming in cricket, it's going to be probably one of the biggest things in India. <clears throat> Gaming in India, according to a KPMG report, the number of online gamers in India grew to 150 million in 2018 to 400 million by mid 2020, with sector expected to triple in value, reach 3.9 billion by 2025, which means unbelievable growth. Over 50% of the India's population is below 25 years of age. So you have to understand the young India coming. This is young India. And if you're old in it, or if your mind is old that we have the traditional way of working, things are changing. And this is the data proving that things are changing. Now, mobile gaming dominates the Indian gaming industry, uh, accounting to 90% of 1.6 billion market and is predicted to rise 3.9 billion by 2000. 25, which means about twice the size of what it is right now. <coughs> Axie Infinity Scholarships, which is again a game and all. Axie Infinity has actually, uh, has Axie India with about 350 verified scholars. And so India is increasing massively and, uh, you know, YGG and other la large guilds are actively recruit recruiting players, partners from the Indian subcontinent, even launching a dedicated sub DAO. Now, uh, DAO, is, so, uh, DAO is something like decentralized autonomous organization, which means there is no hierarchy. So that is what DAO means. Fantasy sports, well, according to uh, the Fiki report, playing by new rules, Fantasy sports grew 24% in 2020, despite the absence of major Indian sport due to COVID restriction. The growth was primarily on the back of IPL cricket season 13 held in last quarter. So fantasy sport user base is currently 100 million and is expected to reach 150 million by next IPL, which we've already done. So this is something that is going on. Now comes the interesting part, the numbers. Investment in India's crypto and blockchain space. Well, 2016, it was 18, 32 billion, 81, 126, 2020 was 37 million. So from 18 million to 37 million in 2022, but it was a huge decrease between 2019 and 20. And there's a surprise. 2021, 638 million, which you can count how many times we've increased. So this is what is happening in terms of data and the revenue that this is generating. Indian companies working on crypto gaming projects, Polygon, you know, he's the leader, Sandeep Matic. You have Polygon, you have uh, DeFi Dollar, 
you know, Totality Corporation, Creda fans, Rainmaker, all of these Neo Fantasy and all of these guys are there. Crypto Bytes or Crop Bytes. So all of these guys are there. Now, GitHub India growth. <clears throat> the So India's economic development has been increasingly intertwined with the nation's technological output. Mainly in software engineering, India's reputation for inexpensive and quality software production is to be expected with its army of 5.8 billion a million developers, second largest globally estimated by GitHub. Now, <clears throat> coming to the end of it, this is what it is. And these are few people who are on top in the tech world. And we have Parag Agarwal, which of course, you know, because of Elon Musk and they all, they both keep fighting these days. And, uh, uh, you know, you have Microsoft, IBM. I mean, all of these guys are there, which I'm sure we all know about these guys. And these are the names of these people. I'm sure you all know about these names, Sundar Pichai or Satya. Nadella and Sanjay Malhotra and, uh, you know, Parag Agarwal, all of these guys, I'm sure you have heard these names. So this is where India is heading to. And uh, <clears throat> this is what the Silicon Valley of India is all about now. And uh, this is what it is. This is India. And, uh, and if you're still not bullish on India, and if you still think that we're not going to get into crypto and India is still not in crypto, well, you can keep your eyes close to it. And uh, if even if you're keeping your eyes close to it, please do subscribe to the channel at least. I mean, your eyes are closed, but you can subscribe to the channel. It's the button right there. You could just do that. But saying that, I mean, it is something that you need to think. You need to know what India is doing and where we are heading to instead of relying on certain news aspect, which is all about negative news, which I'm sure none of these news. So a lot of the news you would have read, I can assure you, I can give it to you in writing. 90% of the news that you would have heard for people who've not entered crypto would have been someone losing crypto, but this data would have not been there in any of the news. Does this really think that are we in a centralized world or a decentralized world? Now, this is where I believe that we need a decentralized world because the news is again centralized and it is what they want you to read and understand it is not the reality sometimes. So we really need to dig deep into it and see what reality is. And reality is what the data shows. Reality is where the money is going. Reality is where the sectors are increasing. The growth of the economy is increasing. This is the reality that's happening. And, uh, and that reality about someone losing money is not really the reality. It's one of those things that has happened. That happens in every industry, be it banking, banks are looted, uh, signatures are forged, properties are uh, sold to two, three people. All of these things happen in other industries, but we're so uh, uh, used to this hearing negative about the crypto industry that as soon as we hear one news, even if a person is lo lost, you know, uh, tiniest of money it would be blown down to probably the biggest thing but 12,000 thousand crore scams in India all of these scams in political world is something that you know is crypto is far beyond all these things so we need a decentralized economy we need decentralized money we need decentralized finance and this is where India is heading to and India is heading to that and India is extremely extremely bullish on the decentralization uh, and digitalization. So this is what my data is. And I hope you're liking the content. If you like the content, please do like, share and subscribe. It takes us a lot of effort to build all these content, to build all these things and get all the news to you in a way that it is not uh, these news that we give to you or the data we give you is not something that is commercialized and we probably try to give you real-time analysis and real-time data as well. So thank you all for joining us. Join us on Twitter, Telegram, everywhere. And uh, I thank you all for watching this and I thank you all for watching this and do like, share and subscribe. Signing off Gunpreet Singh from the Crypto Singh Show. Take care. Bye-bye. Lastly, Jai Hind.